So you've probably already heard about the pink slime, which is um, ammonia that's been added to beef products, and this has been being done for years. Um, it's um, it, it's uh, a way of um, stretching the beef and giving it the, the pink color that you see in ground beef. A lot of that is artificial, in case you don't know by now. And it's actually, um, it has a name, it's called Lean Finely Textured Beef. And that's beef that has been um, nutritionally sprayed with ammonia. So, bon appetit with that. Um, but I understand that there were layoffs, a lot of them, at this company called Beef Products Inc., which is one of the largest producers of, um, of this um, product that um, has the ammonia that stretches the beef, which has been used in school cafeterias and also um, restaurants for years. And although, you know, the FDA says, oh, it's not going to hurt you, a little ammonia is not going to hurt you, um, I don't know about you, but I certainly don't want to eat something that I use to clean my floors with. So, um, so that's what's happening with that. But they they also have some other really nasty stuff that they've been adding to or the knowledge. Foods. Um, the FDA allows food producers to spray this on deli meat um, to kill germs. So, in other words, if they didn't do it, the deli meat you'd get would be full of germs. What a surprise. Insect parts. Yuck. The female whack beetle. Um, and, and this is a, a picture of it here. Um, gives us this ingredient called shellac, which is called confectioner's glaze. And it's used to make candy and fruit and even furniture shiny. Um, carmine, which is commonly used as a red food coloring for fruit juices and candy, is also made from the shells of desert beetles. Oh, this is getting more appetizing by the moment. Okay, there are tiny pieces of plant fibers and wood that are called cellulose, and they are used to make some types of low-fat ice cream seem more creamy. And it is also used to prevent some shredded cheese from clumping. Okay, that's another one to mark off my shopping list. I, I commonly buy the shredded cheese because I like to use it on different um, vegetable dishes and stuff, and I love the way it melts. But I won't be doing that again. You know, either. in um, in my desire to understand um, a lot of the the um, things that happen in terms of cops, quote unquote, accidentally shooting civilians and people getting. Uh, caught up in the crossfire and just all sorts of silly mistakes. I had to go back into time and really understand the type of people who choose to become law enforcement. And I found that in the case of a lot of the um, white, um, nerdy, boys in school, they almost always chose to become cops because they wanted to be the one, they wanted to get back at people who picked at, picked at them when they were um, children. And a lot of them grew up determined that they were going to make them pay, these, these people pay. And I'm not saying all cops, but I'm saying that if you really look into a lot of the real psychological um, reviews of these people, you will see that most of them became a cop because they could either couldn't fight or they couldn't take a joke or maybe they, they took too many jokes and they just decided that, you know what, I'm going to make people respect me. So that that's what I believe happened with... Um, Billy and a lot of these other cops. It doesn't excuse, though, the fact that, um, and this is just a small list, but it doesn't excuse the fact that there are all these people I have here in front of you, 24 cases of people who were killed by police who either died in custody or under questionable circumstances. And the, the figure is much, much, much bigger, but this is just some of them and so you have to wonder, are, are people in law enforcement given a license to kill? And if so, what are the guidelines? Maybe these need to be reviewed. 
And um, another thing that so, some of you might find interesting that I found interesting, and I and I wanted to point it out because I didn't think that um, it was really made known. But look at the Vatican in Rome, and look at the White House in Washington D.C. And I don't know, but to me, they look very similar, um, almost like the same architect. And I, I didn't research it thoroughly because I don't have all the facts behind the design, but I believe that just like banks are built to give you a feeling of stability, if you notice, you, you never go and see a bank made out of wood. It's always made out of some, some type of stone or marble or something that gives the impression that it's not going to be moved anytime soon. And they do that in order for customers to entrust their money there because they want you to feel like we're not running away with your money. We're here to stay. And that's why they have uh, my bank in particular. It has um, the name on all four sides of, of the window. So you can't miss it. Whether you're coming in from the street or the avenue, you're going to see those big letters that spell out the name of the bank. And so they're letting you know we're here and we're here to stay. And I believe that was the implication with these two things that um, they thought bigger was better and if it was um, if it was a big castle like edifice people might be inclined to uh, have faith in it and that's what is um, we're, we we here in the US are expected to have faith in our government and in Rome um, the faith that the people put in their popes and in the Vatican, and, and it, the Vatican even has its own police force talking about police, they're, they have, they're, they're considered a city within the city. So the Vatican rules don't even apply. Um, I mean, the, the rules of Rome don't even apply to the Vatican. Isn't that something? Uh, money, 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 money. Those bits of paper that we, some of us throw it away. And some of us spend it wisely, but do you know that the day is coming very soon when your money is not going to matter? And those same banks that have given you the impression that they're here to stay, they're not. And they will be closing their doors one day, and it, it, and it will be soon. The transition, this transition of us going into a moneyless, paperless society is so close you can almost reach out and touch it. And that's why it amazes me that um, we're gearing up to put a billionaire in the White House. Um, <laughs> this is absolutely uh, ironic because the same thing that they're going to use against us, they're going to use uh, something that is an icon of it. And that indeed is what, it, what Trump is. He's, he's an icon of money. That's what people they associate him with and that will be the very thing that will be one of the first things that will be taken away from us a lot of us will lose our benefits you you're gonna have to find a hustle soon i found one and you're gonna have i, I found actually a couple and um and you're gonna have to find one too actually you can go to amazon and order my book hustling 101 and it'll tell you ways that you can get income and, and income that's a non-taxable too because the time is coming when we're not going to be able to rely on this government for anything. Those of us who are reliant on it for our disability, even the seniors, those of us who are old now and who have worked hard all of our lives for our social security it's going to go away. We're not going to get it. Or we'll get so little that we'll be starving mid-month. So we're going to have to find ways to, to, to take care of that. Okay. Ever wonder if the government is following you? They are. And it's not just with all these different game apps and all this other crap that you have on your phone. Uh, you don't even need social media. Um, someone pointed out to me and I have to say they're absolutely correct in the area that I live there's always sirens and police um, activity and there's always some type of helicopter or something hovering outside of my window not 
right outside, but close enough that if they put on that beam, it comes right into my window. So I already know they're peeking in and they're wondering what I'm up to. And, um, or they're not wondering. They actually already know. Okay, so, um, well, this is, this is pretty deep. Um, with everything that's going on around us, they still find ways to suck out our brain. And this is why you can't just give your brain to them. And this is why I say to you to get away from devices, get away from the internet, get away from television. If you're wondering why I don't do the videos that frequently, one of the reasons is that I take time to get off the internet. Sometimes I'm off it for days. And this is why some of you, my responses may be delayed because I'm not on the, the internet. And when I'm not on the internet, I'm also not on my phone. So I don't check in. Because some days, especially my Sabbath, that belongs exclusively to the Lord. But there are other days that I also take that could be considered a Sabbath as well. Because I will not um, engage in my normal activities. And sometimes I'm fasting. And when I'm fasting, I'm also not on a device. I, I don't even see the point of having doing something holy if I'm going to be checking my social media. That I mean, I don't need to check my social media to talk to God. So, um, so that's out. Okay, and then I want to just say, and and this is um, this is from Isaiah thirteen six. Scream in terror. For the day of the Lord has arrived, and it is the time for the Almighty to destroy. I am recording this on September 11th. It is the anniversary of that terrible, fateful day when the Twin Towers fell. And I have to say, you know, even all these years later, here we are 15 years later, and it still is one of the most horrifying events that have ever, ever occurred on American soil. And um, people, many people thought that day that that was the end of the world. And I saw people praying and getting to their knees and, and begging God to save them. And, and I was right where I could see the towers. And um, there was a pregnant woman there who um, was experiencing pain and, and crying because I think she said her sister was in the, um, in the towers at the time. And so my point is, is that no one knows the hour or the day um, that the Lord cometh. We may have thought that that was the hour and the day. But as those of us who lived through it know, um, it wasn't. It was just a mere, uh, how can I call it, a, a snapshot of what is to come. And I can tell you now, not from experience, but just from, um, from the knowledge of the word, that when the time comes, it will be much, much worse. That was just a small part of the earth. It, 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 if we look at the bigger picture, to our Heavenly Father, the Twin Towers is just a, a minute part of this big earth. When Armageddon comes and when the earth truly does pass away, and it will, and, and you can see in Matthew 24, 36, uh, actually if you start from Matthew 35, it says, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. 
No one knows about that day or the hour, nor even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. And as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be at the coming of the Son of Man. So the same way that, you know, today is it's Sunday and many of you have been out the night before partying and doing what you do. And those of us who celebrate the Sabbath on Saturday, we do what we do. And as in the days of Noah, there were, there were godly people who lived for the Lord and then there were sinners who lived for the world. And up until the very end, it was the two. So I want to say to you people, I will continue to bring these messages as long as I can. Um, my, my speech is, is impaired somewhat. I notice that um, it, ha it has gotten a little bit um, more shaky over time. And that is directly attributed to my illnesses. However, as long as I am able to even form words, I will continue to give you what I have been given to give you via these messages, as long as I have breath. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, for the messages. Thank you for the listeners. Thank you. For the insight, thank you for the research. Thank you for leading me to to what to say, what it is that I should say, and um, and how I should say it. And thank you, Lord, for those who take heed. Um, thank you for my assignment, Lord. Thank you for the subscribers. And thank you for those who simply just wish to check in and, and leave their comments. In Jesus' name.